together with American Songwriter, we have the opportunity to talk to Corey Marks. Adam was able to talk to Corey Marks over the phone. Corey Marks is a former hockey player and pilot who made his musical debut late last year with the release of Outlaws and Outsiders, which features Travis Tritt, Ivan Moody of Five Finger Death Punch, and Mick Mars of Motley Crue. The song became a viral hit with over 15 million streams and over 18 million video views worldwide. Check out Corey's new album, Who Am I? Make sure to check out our YouTube channel and Facebook page at Bringing It Backwards and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bringing Back Pod. We'd appreciate your support if you follow and subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. We're Bringing It Backwards with Corey Marks. Hey, Corey, how's it going? Hey, brother, I'm good, man. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for doing this. Hey, man, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, so um, our podcast is all about your journey in the music industry and how you got to where you are today. Lovely. <laughs> right well, on. Let's talk about that. Right on. Uh, you're originally from Canada? I am, yeah. Tell yeah, me about I'm originally that. From, uh, North Bay on- I'm originally from uh, North Bay, Ontario, Canada. It's, a three- it's three hours north of, of uh, the big city of Toronto. Okay. And then how did you get into music? Well, I grew up, um, you know, I grew up in a musical family and, um, you know, my dad was a drummer back in his heyday and, uh, you know, growing up, of course, in Canada, we were both, uh, well, him first, uh, big Rush fans. Uh Um, And so I I ended up getting into drumming, of course, around the age of of nine or 10 when I got my first drum kit and, you know, started listening to Rush and into my teens, got into, you know, some some, uh, high school bands and local bands. And by 16, I was, you know, uh, recorded my first metal uh, metal record uh, at the local band here called Inflict. And you were know, you the kept, drummer kept of playing that? And, recording. and you were the drummer I'm of that the drummer, band. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't I didn't start singing until um, you know I was really you know 18, 19 years old before I started singing and, and didn't really do this. And that was just backup vocals and uh, didn't really start singing um, you know as a front man I guess or a singer songwriter until I was about 21. Oh wow. Um, okay. So, yeah, so it was you, pretty pretty interesting. But yeah, so you were a drummer then earlier on. What what uh, you said? Your dad was a drummer. Did he was he in bands and stuff, or did he just kind of? Yeah, he was, was in bands. He he toured across Canada for for many years. Um, wow. You know, from uh, I think it was about nineteen till his early twenties with uh, my um, with his brother, my uncle Uncle Wolf Wolf Milestone, who's uh, actually a country artist uh, here in Canada, country western. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, he's still, he's still playing and recording. So, uh, well, my uncle Wolf is not my dad, but, uh, wow. yeah. So I, uh, I kind of got into drumming cause of my dad and, and then kind of took it to the next level and loved every minute of it. I thought it was going to be more of a, like a Tommy Lee, um, uh-huh. kind of, kind of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, ended up picking up guitar and singing and it's done pretty well. Yeah. I'd say, <laughs> um, <laughs> when, when did you, when did you switch from, you said you were in bands playing drums. Um, tell me a little yeah. bit more about that. Were you, you guys just like high school bands or were you ever in an opportunity to tour prior to? Yeah, well, mostly high know. school bands playing playing bars and, um, you know, in, in town and, you know, out of town. And, you know, we actually recorded um, by the time I was, I had just turned 16 and um, mm-hmm. recorded my first, uh, my first record as a drummer for the band Inflict here. Um, it was a, the album was called Steps Along the Warpath. So, you know, it's it really heavy. We were, we were like into Pantera and Lamb of God and all that stuff, Slayer. So it was definitely mm-hmm. more on the rock metal uh, metal side of things. And, um, you know, I, I drum and then into my teens, you know, I was still playing hockey then too. So, um, you know, I, um, I was playing in, in bar bands by like 18 and singing backup vocals and stuff like that. Just taught 40 stuff to make some cash on the side. And, uh-huh. um, you know, you, wasn't you, were, really you until, were singing uh, in those bands or you were just playing drums? Back, backup singer playing drums. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it wasn't until, um, I went away from school uh, when my junior career ended. I had, a, a, a an offer, a uh, full ride to Ohio state university for hockey, but at 18, I didn't want to go back to school and, so I asked them if I had oh, to wow. strike the SAT, SAT uh, test, and of course they said, "Well, yeah, you kind of got to do that." So I uh, kindly declined that offer and continued playing hockey. Um, <laughs> once I got, 
once I got to the end of my, you know, junior career at 20, I was scouted by the Royal Military College of Canada. Um, and, you know, I was also a huge aviation freak. North Bay is a big military town. So I was all around, always around jets and air shows and stuff and always mm-hmm. loved that. Um, and so that being said, I was like, well, you know, if I got a you know full ride there in a sense where, you know, I could play some good hockey for the next five years, get an education, and in the meantime, uh, be one step closer to being a fighter pilot is what I wanted to do. So, oh. you know, I signed up and was, was there for several months. And, um, you know, so what happened is, um, you know, in between studying and hockey, I would, you know, I got I got in a guitar for Christmas the year before and, you know, kind of just started strumming along downstairs and in my room, writing a little bit and playing. And, you know, because I was pretty shy, I would just, you know, post videos on YouTube and, and Facebook just to see what, you know, people were saying and, you know, uh-huh. they thought I was any good, right? And uh, so what would happen is we would go out to this bar called The Brass uh, in Kingston, uh, my, my hockey team and I, and, and, uh, they, I guess caught wind of some of those videos. So without me knowing, uh, there's a good friend of mine, Smitty, uh, who's like a local legend there. He still plays there all the time. Maybe not so much now with COVID, but, um, you know, we were out, we were out and of course, you know, the, uh, beers flowing and feeling good, having a good time. And they, uh, they had told them that when uh, you take your break, you should get, uh, our friend sunshine up on stage to sing some songs. <laughs> and that was kind of like my 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 call sign or nickname at uh, at the Royal Military College of Canada was Sunshine, the star quarterback from Remember the Titans, the movie. And so they gave <laughs> okay. me that. I was the only one there with long hair uh, at the time. So um, you know, I got up and played a few songs, and you know, people loved it. They started asking, like, you know, where else do I play? Do I have music out anywhere? I mean, this is going back to 2012. And, and you were playing original 2012. songs? Yeah, I, I oh, just, okay. yeah, I, I had tried some original stuff, just, you know, why not? They don't right. know me anyway, so I'll just do whatever I want. And <laughs> sure. again, it definitely had some, definitely had some liquid courage, so it made things a lot easier. Um, you know, so then what happened is, you know, every Wednesday or every second Wednesday, we would go there, you know, and we had some time off, I think, because, you know, on a Wednesday night, we had, you know, no practice or anything, so we go there and Smitty would call me up and I'd play a few songs and I guess I kind of caught the bug there and, um, you know, things didn't pan out. They didn't stick to their guns and, and the plan that, and the deal that we had originally. So my brother's girlfriend at the time was like, well, I'm, you know, managing a bar and we need music on Wednesday. So why don't you come back home, figure your shit out. And in the meantime, you know, you could play every Wednesday here. Mm-hmm. And that led to like playing every Wednesday there and then playing Thursday at, another bar at the bowling quench and the Fox and the fiddle. And then over a span of about 18 to like 20, you know, two years to two and a half years, I'd, I had built the band and, and was literally playing at every club in town and then started, you know, graduated to other cities and doing all that stuff. And then, you know, just kind of thought like, man, I can do something with this. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, so, and, uh, nine, nine fun long years later, here I am. (laughs) <laughs> sure uh, so okay so you're, you're doing the bar thing um you get a band together over those couple of years and then did you did you put a record out or you did you go to the studio what was what happened from there yeah so so once i had a band out and started playing you know festivals and stuff like that uh, around canada um mm-hmm. and uh in 2014 i was signed to um big star recordings up here in canada and uh the indie country label and so i actually put i put a a record out called this man um and uh you know that was a number one record in canada i think for for a little bit and it was number wow. three in the states on, on on itunes and uh you know for the you know for the first week or two um and so that allowed me i had four singles to canadian country radio and um you know that allowed me to to tour across canada and play festivals and and all that stuff so that was um the album came out in 2015. Um, okay. And so, yeah, so my first single came out in 2014 called Smartphone. That was off that record. And, and it got uh, radio later on, and everything? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, you now we had a video and all that on YouTube, all that good stuff. And, wow. And so, um, yeah. And then um, in, in 2017, um, you know, that's when I started t- talking to my producer, Kevin Cherko, and um, from Las Vegas. And, you know, he came and watched me open for Toby Keith in 2016 and thought, wow. hell yeah, man, 
I want to work with this guy. So uh -huh. um, we shook hands, threw back a, a shot of Jack Daniels after the show. And, um, you know, we started, we started writing and recording in September of 20. Yeah. September, 2015, we started writing and recording and, um, you know, by the, by, by 2017, um, you know, we, we, had, we had pitched our stuff to Nashville and all those labels, but I guess it was a little too country for them or a little too rock for them. One or the other, not enough uh -huh. pop, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, and so, uh, so then I was picked up by, um, one of the biggest uh, indie rock labels in the world, uh, Better Noise, and they loved the project. They loved the sound. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, they loved it so much they signed me, and I'm the first and only uh, country artist on this label, oh, on wow. this rock label. Yeah, they, they have a ton of big uh, bands on the. I mean, I know the label. They have like um, uh, Five Finger Death Punch and Papa Roach. Yeah, Motley, big... Motley Crue, Hell oh, Yeah, Motley Crue, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Six A.M. In Flames, uh, Bad Wolves. Oh, yeah, yeah it's pretty, it was pretty wow. wild. Yeah, they got them too. And um, so the thing, you know, the cool thing is, is um, so what they did is, yeah, they they loved it. Wanted to, wanted to sign me and put out a record and work with me. And I felt the same way. And, uh, you know, they opened a whole new uh, country venture. So now there's there's Better Noise LA, Better Noise Germany, UK, or mm -hmm. London. Uh, there's Better Noise Toronto. And now there's Better Noise Nashville. And, uh so that's uh, it's quite an honor to be the first and only uh, cowboy on this on this rock label. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. But you kind of have like a rock sound to your to your songs still. I think. Yeah. I'm 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 really both both those guys. I mean, like you know, Kevin, my producer, produces Five Finger Death Punch and Ozzy Osbourne, but also oh. <laughs> worked okay. with, also worked with you know Mutt Lang on all of Shania Twain stuff. So oh, interesting. And him and I are very very similar both drummers we love merle haggard and waylon jennings but we love the hard rock stuff like ozzy osbourne and, and all those guys we knew what we wanted to do with this this record and that was create a sound that there's no other sound like it i think both in country and rock and that's something that i'm really proud of and you know and i'm really hoping this opens up a, a, a totally different lane and new path for country music to go down and um, you know a new venture venture for them and i think it's 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 working so far i mean it's it's for country fans, rock fans, and hell, even even some metal fans are, are digging it too. So, but I, you know, deep down, I'm I am all that. You know, uh, no pun intended, but that's who I am. I'm I'm country rock and metal, and mm -hmm. and so that's that's kind of what we wanted to do with this record is is demonstrate um, all three of those angles. You know? Yeah, and you're doing really well. I mean, that this record is killing it already. I mean, it was top ten on in the mainstream rock, and it did well in yeah. country and yeah um and you were yeah, able was, to have uh, top go ahead. top 10 at top 10 at u.s rock uh we peaked at number three at in germany at germany mainstream rock and wow. um number 12 number 12 up here in canada so it's you know and you know uh the the new single and video uh featuring lizzie hale has been added to cmt usa so i mean that's whoa that's you know, huge we're, we're kind of holding on to, you know, taking hold of everything here, man. And that's, uh, that's what we wanted. So we hope it just keeps growing and getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And on this record, you were actually able to work with McMars from Motley Crue. That must've been a pretty full circle moment for you. Yeah. I mean, I'm still wanting to play like I'm Tommy Lee and stuff you were talking about earlier. Yeah, it is. It is kind of crazy. I mean, um, you know, and, and obviously growing up a uh, country, you know, listening to country music, you know, to have a country music legend and outlaw like Travis Tritt on there. Oh, sure. Uh, it was just incredible. And, and of course, you know, five finger death punch is absolutely killing it around the world. <laughs> and to have their lead singer, I, the moody want to be part of it too, for a debut single. It's just been, it's just been really cool. And the thing is, is I didn't want to just have anybody uh, feature. I wanted artists that could really relate to this song and, um, you know, you look at Motley Crue, we know what they did, you know, they, mm -hmm. they, they were a bunch of, you know, crazy kids, of course. Um, you know, then there's, you know, Travis Tritt, you know, as he would say, put some drive in his country, he added some Southern rock to, to, to that feel and, and those late eighties and nineties and, and then five fingers doing their thing. I think all these artists and bands, um, that are on this track, outlaws and outsiders, um, you know, they, they were all outside the box a little bit, you know, just different from everybody else in their, their time and their genre. 
Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to do too. And so every, every one of us are, uh, you know, in a sense, outlaws and outsiders. So, um, just the fact that they love the song, what it represented and, 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 um, you know, like, like what I was doing, it's, uh, it's a, it's an absolute honor to have all these guests feature on, uh, on that debut single. Mm -hmm. Was it cool working with them or did they, were, were you able to work directly with, with those, with those guys? Well, yeah, it's, it's pretty neat now. I mean, like Ivan, Ivan and I will text every now and then and Travis Tritt and I will text and shoot the shit every now and then. So it's kind of surreal. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when you wake up, oh, you're, you're, I'm used to like a text from like, mom, did you pay your bills? You know, right. but then it, you wait, it's like Travis Tritt, what the hell, you know, and just, <laughs> just checking in or Ivan Moody. And it's really, really cool. Um, I, I didn't get the opportunity to meet Mick yet, which I really hope that happens. Um, um, but, uh, you know, we shot the video with, with, uh, with, with Ivan and Travis and it was just a really cool experience. They're, they're both, uh, really interesting, cool and humble dudes. So again, just honored to have them. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really awesome that you're able to work with them. Um, and this record, you were supposed to do like a big tour on this album with with um, yeah. like Bush and Breaking Benjamin and Breaking, everything. Yeah, that would have. I mean, yeah. Aside from that tour, like, were you able to play any of these songs like out at all? Because obviously the record came out and we're all stuck inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was. Um... I was on a cross Canada tour with my good buddy, Gord Bamford, uh, the country superstar here in Canada. And so we were on the hashtag redneck tour, which was going <laughs> across Canada. It was, 20, <laughs> it was 20 plus dates. And, uh, we got to our second show when COVID hit. Oh and my it gosh. all got, it all got. So I was able to play outlaws and outsiders with a full band and he's got a kick-ass band. And I was able to play that song, uh, with full production, uh, twice. And, uh, that's it. <laughs> oh my gosh that's crazy were you far from home when yeah. you when when COVID hit yeah i was in uh, moose jaw saskatchewan uh so it's uh pretty much like right dead center halfway across the country so i was about um uh, you know i think eight uh probably two thousand miles from home when it hit so uh had to hop back on the bus and from there go even further go, get to alberta lacombe alberta where, where gord's living so now we're about you know closer to 3,000, I guess, or 2,500 miles from home. Um, pack up all my shit, all my merch, everything I had set up for the tour, and um, hop on a plane and, 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 and head back home. So it was a long, let's just say I, I know that uh, the, uh, the bars were, were happy to see me at the airport because <laughs> I spent quite a bit of time there. <laughs> yeah, totally. Wow. Like, did you notice on that first show that things were getting kind of weird or – the second show? I mean. uh, actually, yeah, the very first show when it all started happening, we were like, what the hell is going on? And then Gord was like, listen, guys, we don't know what's happening, but just have fun with it. Uh, it's probably going to get shut down, but we don't know yet. And then by the second show, you know, we had, uh, it was a riot. We had a great time, mind you, but we knew, um, you know, we had to put everything into that show and and have an after party like we just we just crushed 20 dates across Canada but really we only crushed two and we knew we were all going home within a within the next couple of days actually some of the artists were leaving the venue you know we, we stayed and partied after the show a little bit but then literally took a cab from there to the hotel room packed the shit and head to the airport and left at like two in the morning to go back home oh yeah they already knew the that party. it was it was over with at that point oh yeah it was all done yeah Oh my gosh. Was it, was the crowd yeah. smaller than anticipated? Cause I did talk to a couple people uh, that were saying that they had like a sold out show and they, in like the day or day before everything got shut down, like they noticed that, Hey, there's only like a third of the people here, but the, sh the tickets so are all sold. Like, was that a, the case? Yeah. For you guys? Really? yeah, it definitely wasn't as full. Like these shows were half arenas. So they're like, I think there were, you know, anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 people. Um, and I know we were very close to that uh, in sales. Uh -huh. um, but some of them were already talking about, you know, getting their tickets back. And, you know, people were, were shutting down, basically. Right? Didn't, the world didn't know what the hell was going on. So there was a lot of people like, when I was in Moose Jaw, I'm, uh, you know, a big, big fan and friend of the Air Force since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And so I flew with the Canadian Forces Snowbirds in 2017. Um, and if you're not familiar with them, it's like the U.S. Navy Blue Angels or the U.S. Oh, Air cool. Force Thunderbirds. 
Yeah. So I flew with them and been really good friends with them over the years, and some of them were still on the team. And actually the whole team, including the flight, the, uh, the, the pilots and the um, technicians, and they were all coming out to the show. And, um, you know, they, they, were, they were all going to get Corey Mark hats and T-shirts and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and I was actually, um, that morning, was get, getting ready because they are going to take me for – uh, take me up for, for a tour of their base and, you know, play in the flight simulators that they have there and all that stuff and walk, walk us through the hangar. And they had to cancel that. And then later that afternoon, <clears throat> they all got called in as well and were told that they are not to be in, in public at all or anything. So there was about 15 or 20 of them uh, that couldn't, could no longer come. Like we were all planning on, they're all planning on coming to the show and then going out after, right. And having a good time and, that all got shut down too. So that was a, that was a big bummer. And, you know, that would have been, you know, 20, 20, uh, you know, people serving our country that we were excited to have and we're going to put in the VIP and perform for, but mm-hmm. um, unfortunately due to COVID, they weren't able to, uh, they weren't able to come out anymore. So that yeah, was, yeah. Cool. Our, our crowd uh, kind of you know, got down a bit. Wait, so you didn't even get to go and, and do any of that then, huh? Go check out the hangers and then the no, flight simulator and all no, that. No, I, I did it. I did it a few years ago, but I mean, I would do that every day. I just love that stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I, I wasn't able to do any of that, and they weren't able to to come to the show either. So that's a bummer. Yeah. Do you have? It was a bummer have indeed. Ever, have you ever thought about going back and getting your pilot license? Actually, funny you ask. I'm I've been I've been studying uh, that for the last. Um, and you know, the last two, three months since COVID hit, I figured oh, really? you know, I can't tour. I... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm really close. I was really close before, before the, uh, my school shut down when I was 19, right before the test. And then uh, in 2018, I, I, I continued the flying part of it. Mm-hmm. And so now I probably have about 20 hours left. I'm actually writing, I'm writing, I'm doing the written exam, uh, in, uh, well, three weeks from now. And, um, the schools are opening back up here. So I'm going to start the flying again in October and I'm, I'm planning to be, uh, you know, to, to, well, I'm going to get my pilot license by, by the end of the fall. Wow. So, that's exciting. That's awesome. Yeah, man. I'm, and, you know, that's a bucket list for the last 10 years. So I, uh-huh. I got to get it done. Yeah. And then you can fly yourself to shows. <laughs> that's the plan, man. That is <laughs> yeah. the plan. Throw your crew Air in like a little, yeah, a little, uh, little plane and, and do your touring that way. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. No, and that's 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 actually the uh, that's actually the dream and the goal, man. Really, you want yeah, you want to be able to fly fly around to different cities and stuff and play. That'd be actually really rad. Like the, yeah, I mean, like you know, there's there's guys like I mean, even like Tom Cruise. They got like old planes, like P fifty one Mustangs, World War two fighters, and you know, it's, it's it's very possible to do that. Obviously, um, you know, got to have some hits and, and have some good touring <laughs> um, first to, to to be able to fund that, but. Uh, that's the plan, man. I've, um, you know, here where I grew up, they always had um, the long weekend of August. Uh, they would have um, air shows and concerts, right? So it was, it was called Heritage Festival. Uh-huh. And so that's that's one thing I, I plan on doing eventually. Maybe, you know, in the next five years, I'd love to do a tour, which consists of air shows and concerts. I think it would be a great way to, you know, to bring people together and, and um, you know, just just a great event. So I, you know, obviously, I think it would be really cool to not only be able to take part and potentially headline uh, one night of the festival, but then during the day, you know, I'm one of the acts in the air show, and that's yeah. that's kind of the the biggest the biggest dream I have um, uh, to to accomplish. I think uh, aside from awards and all that stuff, I think that's that's probably my my number one is 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 to be successful enough to be able to do that. Yeah, High that, aviation and music. That's cool. I haven't heard that because we're in San Diego. So we have, you know, the military is very prominent here. Um, we have the Miramar Absolutely. Navy base or the, the air base yeah. where they shot like Top Gun. Top Gun. Um, yeah. Sure. So, every, so every year they do, you know, the air show here. But they, it's yep. always it's always to like, you know, a, some playlist that was curated. And then, you know, it's just like music out of the speakers. And then obviously you get to see the planes, which is dope. But um there's never there's never like a live act like i never think, thought of that like do it like having you play like a big you know say you play a stadium and then you have the the, the planes yeah. doing doing their thing del- during it well, That's- see, for, 
the way I see it would be like typically the air show is from noon till four, right? So it's like mm -hmm. noon till four air show, awesome. And then, you know, you move over and from, you know, from six to 11, it's, it's uh, you know, a, a huge concert. That yeah, that's cool. That's a cool idea. You should set it up here in San Diego and do it with the <laughs> the Air Force base. That would be here. <laughs> that would be pretty incredible, man. Maybe uh, I'll get a. Maybe by then I'll be able to text Tom Cruise and 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 uh, right. And, uh, I'm pull get some him strings. on board. <laughs> I'm pull some strings. Yeah, exactly. the Air Force base. <laughs> exactly. Right, right on, Corey. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I really appreciate your time. Hey, man, I appreciate you. It's, uh, it's a pleasure, and uh, we'll keep in touch, man. Be safe out there. Yeah, I have one more question for you before I let you go, if that's cool. Um, yeah, I wanna know. Yeah, I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Um, this is advice that, that I, uh, I'll have to take, too, <laughs> on, on certain days. But uh, just, um, you know, my advice would just be to, to you know, don't focus too much on um, – you know, what's going on around you in a sense of, you know, um, just kind of set a goal where you want to be and, and, and do that. Um, you know, just, uh, just focus on, on yourself and your art and, and don't get pressured into doing things for, for reasons that, you know, you don't agree with just, uh, keep doing your thing. And, and most of all, be patient. It's, uh, it's a hell of a roller coaster, ups and downs. Um, you know, things can change in a day. So, just kind of uh, enjoy the ride, I think, would be um, work hard, enjoy the ride, and be patient. <laughs>